here we are. We hear it all the time from nearly everyone who visits, and it's something that I myself truly appreciate, the uniqueness of our community. While it would seem that every community should enjoy the blessings that we have here, it's really not that typical. We are proud, as we should be, to boast. Families, a full lineup of excellent Torah schools, thriving synagogues, shuls, chesed, community-minded businesses, and a clear community vision and collaboration led by strong Torah leadership. We all should be very, very proud. Today, there's a lot of movement in our community. Every mice at every organization is currently undergoing or planning a major expansion, the shoals, schools, businesses. In short, our community is poised for an explosion. Going forward, we need to focus on what's gotten us to this point, constantly remind ourselves why we do what we do, and maintain and strengthen our connection with the Torah. We have to ask ourselves the following questions. Who will be the Torah teachers of tomorrow? What will our schools look like? Who will drive and lead these schools? How will our shuls expand? Who will step up as needed? I recently came across a file from Rabbi Frank that listed everyone who was currently studying in the Kolo circa 2008 and what level they were up to. When we look back, it's astounding to see the growth that so many people have undergone. We must ask ourselves today, who will take great strides in their personal growth in the years ahead? Who will dedicate time to learning themselves? How full will the base medrash be? What kinds of shiurim classes and programs will we have? Who will attend? And finally, we must ask ourselves, in what way can our unique bond, our achdus, which is our community, in what way will it grow? Who will join our community? What relationships will be made and strengthened through Torah? Who will become a bainet Torah and expand and enhance our community? These are the questions we are all asking and should continue to ask. The answers to these questions will ensure that our community will continue to be the incredible community that it is, and more. With that backdrop, I am extremely excited to welcome Rabbi and Mrs. Lowinger to our community. Rabbi Lowinger will serve as a Reish Chabura in the Kailal. In this capacity, he will work together with the Reish Kailal in mentoring and guiding the Kailal rabbis. But beyond that, the Lowingers bring their tremendous positive energy to our community. If there is a couple that embraces these concepts of teaching Torah, of personal growth, and of reaching out to everyone, it's the Lowingers. So as a way of introducing the Lowingers, we sent a videographer to the Chicago community Kailal to get a picture of the Lowingers from those who know them the best. Just a quick note, Rabbi Francis, who you'll see in the video, is Mrs. Lowinger's father. Please enjoy Voices from Chicago. Let's try that one more time. Rabbi Yossi Lowinger is a Reish Chaburah in a kail is going to be... Uh tremendously uplifting for the coil. I can tell you firsthand what a successful coil can do and it will change the face of a community. Uh, coil has an impact on a community in very many ways. The fact that you have a group of young men sitting and learning Tyra adds conducive to the city. It, it elevates the whole level of observance, raises the standards Children see, parents see what a Torah personality is, and they get the uh, higher hasagas. <coughs> what Rabbi Lohinger will bring to a community is a tremendous amount of wisdom, a tremendous amount of knowledge, and just an overall great person. It looks like Minneapolis will be gaining a, a, tre a tremendous couple, a tremendous family, and uh, and um, I think they will learn to appreciate them very quickly. His, his energy, his love for other people, his love to teach, his love for Torah, he has an infectious, magnetic uh, energy about him that uh, just draws people in. Rabbi Lowinger is one of the most electrifying forces that I've ever seen in Bismedrish. 
cares about every single young man in the Kailo, cares about every balabas that walks into the Kailo, that walks into his shul, and gives him a smile and greets them. Somehow turned a switch on onto my son, um, Atiyan, and uh, he grew and, and, and steig in, uh, throughout the year with him. He wanted them to make sure that they were pushing the limits for themselves in learning. So when he saw they were learning, but he saw they were getting to their peak, he came up with something more and new and creative so that they should push even further. He's a guy and he likes learning on higher levels with higher people and Minneapolis, he says, is a place that he would enjoy learning on a higher level. I think he's going to heat up the, the base matters. That's, uh, that's I think, the, the first, I think that's the first advantage that comes to mind. I think there'll be a lot of energy. A very Gishmaka person. He's a very uh, a person who you people are going to want to be friendly with. He and his wife and his children. He's going to get to know them. They'll get to know him, and that's going to have a very uh, ripple effect on, on the Thai community. I am extremely, extremely fond of my daughter, my son-in-law, and my grandchildren, and I'm going to miss them very much. But it is comforting that they're going to be playing an important role in Minneapolis. And for the sake of Torah, I'm willing to forego, uh, forego having them so close by as before. What happened was I went down there. And two things happened. Number one, I loved the community. Mamish loved the community. And I loved also the Kailu. I loved the Kailu. I loved the Kailu and the light. And I loved the, the, the learning. I really I threw myself into it. And I tasted that passion again for it. And I Mamish loved it. Um... I, I know that I'm the last speaker, so I'm going to try to shorten my uh, remarks a little bit. I just want to begin by thanking Hashem for bringing my family here with me. Um, the truth is, this is a very, very exciting moment in our lives, and uh, we're really, really looking forward to our move. Originally, when the position first came up for, for the Resh Chabura position, so my father-in-law suggested to me that I should look into it. And I met with Rabbi Goldberger. We met in Chicago. He was in Chicago then, and I, I had a little conversation with him. And then we talked about, he suggested maybe I should come out, uh, come out for Shabbos with my wife. And I said, let me think about it. Give me a week. I called him back a week later, and I said, I'm not coming out. So he said, why not? I said, because... I'm really happy here. I'm happy in Chicago. I like what I do. My family is, loves Chicago. I, you know, I'm near my, my in-laws and everything is great. I live right near the Kailul and I have Chavrusas there. It, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to move. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to bring me down to Minneapolis. You're going to bring me and my wife for Shabbos and you're going to take us around and you're going to arrange meals and you're going to arrange entertainment and everything and all that. And what's going to happen? And I'm going to say I'm not coming. So why should you bother? It's too, much of a, it's too much of a bother. Don't do it. And then I said, also, I remember when I was, when I was in the Chicago community call, I remember we used to bring out potential young light, and we'd go through the whole, uh, you know, the whole Shabbos and everything and putting on our best face. And then they would say no. And it was a very emotional, it was a big emotional drain on the call when that happened. So I figured, why should I put the uh, Minneapolis community through the same thing? So I said, I'm not coming. So he says, nevertheless, come for Shabbos. Don't think, any, don't think past that. Just come for Shabbos. Rabbi Goldberger had a tremendous and has a tremendous confidence in the community. I came for Shabbos. Again, I came really to humor him. You know, I agreed to come. I'll come. I came. Uh, I, I prepared for it. The moment I walked into the base medrash, I walked into the base medrash and I saw the young light, and I got to meet the Rish Kail, and I saw the tremendous energy they have in learning. The young light are tremendous Talmud Chacham, each one in their own right. And then with the Rish Kail, like Rabbi Gibber, it's, it's unbelievable. I realized that in Minneapolis, to tell you the truth, a community I had not heard of much before, there's a gem there. 
There's gems, but in particular, a giver is a Godel Batayra. And besides for being a Godel Batayra, his warmth and caring and everything, it, it came through immediately. And And I, I warmed up to the place immediately. I'm, I, as I said, I think on the, uh, vid on the video, I, I fell in love with the uh, Kyle almost uh, right away. And um, that changed everything. The, the, seeing the, the tremendous, not just the learning, but also the midas of the young light, their warmth, the natural warmth, the community. I walked into the shul and I saw how the davening, it's, it's a warm davening, it's a beautiful davening. And uh, by the time we left, things had changed completely. I had done a 180, and all of a sudden, I wanted to go, and my, my mother-in-law couldn't believe it. She was like, she, she, I, I came back, and, you know, I was already thinking about going here, and she's, and she's you know, slow down, slow down. Um, she even told my father-in-law, she says, she says to my father-in-law, Rabbi Francis, she says, why are you doing this? Are you trying to get him out of here? Um, but the rest is history, so I want to thank you for that warmth and for the tremendous levels of learning and of uh, the davening and everything that really attracted us here. And Amir Tzushem, I, I hope that I'll be able to uh, add to it as well. I just want to uh, say one thought. I just want to say one thought about appreciating what a kail does, especially this kail. There's a, if one would imagine to himself, in the times of the Beis Mikdash, the times of the Temple, what was the holiest, who was the holiest person so the holiest person is the Kayin Gadol, the high priest. He's the holiest person. And what is the holiest place? The Beis Mikdash. That's the holiest place. We're in the Beis Mikdash, the Holy of Holies, the Kaidish Kadashim. And what's the holiest time? The holiest time is Yom Kippur. And combine all three, you get the Beis Mikdash, the Kayin Gadol, on Yom Kippur, and he goes in to do the Avedas Apnim. He goes in to do the thing that he does only once a year the special service that he does it once a year in the innermost chambers of the Kedush HaKadoshim of the Beis HaMikdash. There's nothing more holy than that. There's nothing more Kaddish than that. But that's not really true. There's an incredible Gemara. The Gemara says, describing the Torah, Yikara hi mipninim. The Gemara is talking about Talmidei Chachamim, about Torah scholars. The Gemara says, Yikara hi mipninim. It is more precious than Pninim. Pninim on the simple level means jewels. Tyra is more precious than jewels. But the Gemara explains it to mean Yikarahi mipnim. It is more precious than the Kayin Gadol who enters the Beis Mikdash Pnim on the innermost room in the holiest of holies on the holiest day. A Talmud Chacham is Yikara is more precious than that. When you have a Kail of such outstanding Yungalite, such an outstanding Rish Kail, so we're dealing with kehanim gedolim. We're dealing with the most incredible levels possible, and that causes such a ripple effect. It has such a such an incredible influence on all the surroundings that it can cause, it can create, and it can help create such a beautiful community. So I'd like to end off really with just a, a tremendous thank you for the way everybody has greeted me with such warmth. Thank you really for ha creating such a beautiful community that we'll now be moving into. And uh, a bracha that we should all be zaycha, we should merit to see haramas karen hataira, we should merit to see the majesty of the taira be spread far and wide in Minneapolis and really in the world over. Thank you. Fantastic. Let's conclude. We know what makes our community great, and we are now focused on what will continue to make it great going forward. We have one last order of business. What can we do now? I asked myself that question first about the Kailul. What can we do as a Kailul? We can enhance the community by bringing in families such as the Lowingers. We can grow the community by bringing in more Kailul families, more Yingalite. We can expand with more programming. We can listen to whatever ideas you may have to promote Torah. 
and we can facilitate. We have resources, we have Torah teachers, we have a Baruch Hashem, a nice building. We can facilitate Torah study. This is what we can do. But what can you do? Walk away from here tonight, you can come learn. You can become a Bainet Torah. You could start a class today. You can invite a friend to come learn. And of course, you could always donate time, money, and expertise. If each one of us does what we can to enhance the Torah teachers, the Torah students, and our Torah community, if each one of us strengthens our connection to the Torah, we can be certain that Kenai Nahara, the babies born in our community this year, will enjoy a community as wonderful as the one we enjoy today, and then some. Thank you all for coming.